Yo yo, what is up guys and welcome back to a brand new league racing video. It has been a while since we've done a league race. Last time around we were racing around Jeddah. Uh, we missed the WR round Mexico. Uh, I don't remember what race it was, but we missed that one. So we've lost a few points in the, in the Drivers Championship there. But today we're back around Circuit America. So as you can see here, Q3. We're not in it because we have problems with our pedals, so I decided to join mid qualifying um, and fix them before uh, we went into the race. So we're doing a last of first challenge today around Circuit America. This was straight after F1 Esports, so also made it a bit more fun, you know. Thomas Ronhaar, of course, uh, we were fighting him in F1 Esports uh, around here, and we managed to just about take the win on the last lap. F1 Esports videos will come out. Uh, once the F1 Esports video uh, season is finished, sorry, um, simply because uh, we don't want to give anything away uh, that we're doing in the races during F1 Esports, so they will come after um, the F1 Esports season is finished. We're still fully in the championship fight, both in WR and in F1 Esports. We're both behind Lucas Blakely, unfortunately, <laughs> in both standings. But let's head into the race now. WR round whatever around Trek of the Americas. It's going to be five red lights. And away we go. Pretty good start of the line. You can see straight away we get one car. Uh, Il Cabena yeah, at a pretty poor start there. And now we go around the outside. You can see we've gone very, very deep. But unfortunately, it didn't really pay off. Um, sometimes if you go very wide. There are incidents on the inside and you can just avoid all of them, but unfortunately not this time around. And now into the S section we go, you can see a lot of cars slow down very suddenly and that's Tino and uh, Ikerabena both with front wing damage. We were lucky not to pick up any damage because I think we slightly tapped Tino there. Um, just like with it last time we raised him. Um, but yeah, very fortunate that... Um, they both have front wing damage now. It's Drake Dempsey is out of the session. And that safety car deployed. So, uh, full safety car. And that opens up the strategy for everyone. And as you guys might know, with the new F122 update, you can choose your tires. Um, how many mediums, hards or softs you want. So, um, I couldn't select it. But I know we went for the balanced one. So, we've got two new sets of mediums. And I saw so many people pitting that I was like, mm, might as well stay out there and, um, you know, get track position. But then later on this lap, you see Jack West there from mediums and I think he goes to softs. Yes, he does go to softs. Um, and the reason that I changed my mind to box this lap to mediums is because I knew all of them were going onto the hearts and tried to go to the end. And if we stay in hearts, it's going to be hard to um, gain track position to the people ahead of us. So I decided, let's box for new mediums. All those people behind me are gonna box for hearts. But then suddenly, all those people started overtaking me behind the safety car. I, I had no idea why they did that. But um, I was so confused. Of course, you can overtake each other in the pit lane, but we were nowhere near the pit lane yet. I think Ikerbena might have actually overtook us um, in the pit lane um, But the artists definitely didn't they already overtook us coming out of the second last corner Doesn't matter. We're just gonna get on with our last to first challenge. We rejoin in P17 instead of P14 um, So yeah, we got uh, three places extra to make up for and We're gonna try and get them as fast as possible. So coming out of the final corner now new mediums versus a lot of uh, new hearts and we should have quite a large grip advantage of straight away into turn one. We're gonna go for it on Icarbena. And then next up is Modesto Mena. Uh, also on New Hearts. I think there are only two people ahead of us in the wall train on mediums. And I think those people started on those tires. So um, yeah, we should have the tire advantage compared to absolutely everyone. It will fade over the next few laps. So we're gonna have to try and makes move fast and you can see we're trying to duck out of the dirty air in that wall section and get a good exit which which we've managed to do and we're gonna go down the inside of yet another car and that is up to p15 as we should have a much better exit compared to the mclaren now jack west up next 
on the hard, Tino on the medium as well. Um, he boxed for a new front wing and for a new set of mediums on lap 1 straight away. Whereas I wanted to have a slightly newer set of mediums. Because um, if you do a lap behind a safety car, you're always going to get around 3-4% extra tire. Where as you can see, it's bunched up right there. And now we're going to straight away go down the inside here. As Jack West breaks a little bit deep, spins Tino around. And up to P13 we go. Um, so what does it get? Poor Tino got an incident. Uh, where he couldn't do anything about. But up to P13 we go. Uh, Alessio Di Capa on hearts. And then it's Valentin Tivert on um, mediums with a 5 second penalty. But Alessio with a big moment there. And we are straight away going to go for it. Up to P12. As we did set a purple uh, last sector there. So, we are flying on this new set of mediums, and next up is Valentin Tivert on the mediums. I'm not sure if he started on the mediums, I think he might have boxed um, on lap 1 as well, because he has a 5 second penalty, and that's probably for speeding in the pit lane. So, um, we're still going to have to overtake him if we want to make up more ground, and that's what we're going to try and do as soon as possible. You can see we've used quite a bit of our ERS already, but um, if you want to make overtakes, you're always going to have to do that. We've got a bit wide through there compared to Valentin as he gets a big moment on that exit. And that's going to help us. He's going off track there. We're going to turn on the overtake button. And we are yet again going for a move into this hairpin. Up to P11 we go. And now it's a lot of hard runners in front of us. So that's good news for us. As that should make our life a little bit easier. But we're going to have to keep making these moves fast. Because those hearts are only going to get faster. Uh, compared to our mediums, of course, softer compound wears out faster, but initially it's much faster. So, Cartoluni now ahead of us on um, those hearts. And I was thinking about making a move into this long left hand, and you can see he was slightly covering it off. So I was like, hmm, not worth the risk. We might as well wait uh, for a better opportunity. And uh, yeah, we also. I kind of need to save a bit of a ERS because we are, we've been using a lot in this past few laps. And our second stint, we're going to try and make more moves as well, of course. As I tapped Carter a little bit in that final corner, I made sure not to turn on my overtake button because I didn't want to take advantage of it. So I decided to uh, go defensive on Valentin because he did straight away go on the attack. And now we've managed to cover that off, but Valentin has managed... Um, it around the outside i gave him enough space on the exit uh, but we managed to cover it off and now we're gonna try and overtake carter without tapping him on the rear so um now we can make a clean move maybe somewhere on the middle straight because yeah, again i didn't quite get a corner right as carter has gone off track there um struggling with the back end it's probably the most difficult corner on the track there trying to get the power down and now we're once again going to turn on the overtake button and go for the move straight away. See, we've got a lot more straight line speed with the help of the overtake button. And into the points we go. So, nine more people to go to, uh, to complete our last to first challenge. But of course, there are a lot of uh, very fast drivers up front. Uh, some ex-F1 Esports drivers. Um, also, some F1 Esports Challenger drivers. But also, some actual F1 Esports drivers like Thomas Ronar. Uh, Jake Benham, um, Ruben Pedreno, I think, from the Challenger series. No doubt that I, I would be pretty surprised to not see him on the Avon Esports grid next year because he's been pretty much as fast as the Avon Esports drivers. Um, it's probably a little bit easier to do it in league racing, of course, but still, if you got the pace, then you're going to be up there. Um, so, yeah, Max Wissel up next on the hearts. As now we move on to lap 9, end of lap 9. Um, and we're going to try and get past him as soon as possible. Before our tires drop off a cliff. Now you can see there, a little moment there. So I saw my opportunity close up. And use the overtake button into turn 1. And up to P9 we go. Now time and shooter on a set of mediums. I think he's the last medium runner there. Uh, actually... Manuel Biancalila is still up there as well on the set of mediums. He will be going to the hearts. So will Time and Shooter because they all started on a set of mediums. Um, whereas we boxed for uh, a set of mediums. So we've already uh, completed our 
mandatory tire swap. We've already done. Uh, we've we started on hearts, so we've used two compounds, whereas Timon and Biancolila both did not uh, do that yet. So they will have to move to a set of hearts, and we'll be we will be going to another new set of mediums. So you see there, Timon has dropped out of DRS and getting passed by Mirko Suriano. Beautiful name, by the way. Uh, just wanted to point that out. <laughs> But uh, you see the timer flashing as well, so he's under 10% ERS. And I think he just tried to stay in the DRS window of that Haas right there, but couldn't. And he tried to use his ERS to try and still stay within there, you know. But um, he didn't manage to. So we're going to try and go for a move probably on the next lap. Um, and yeah, take advantage of his low ERS to try and get track position. But as you can see there, he is boxing, so... We didn't need to do that, and now we're just going to try and stay in the DRS of Mirko Siriano because I felt like he had pretty good pace and he's pushing right now as well to get in the DRS uh, window of George Nadar and currently he is 1.5 seconds outside of that. You can see I have to use a little bit of my ERS to make sure I'm going to get DRS and stay in that one second window. So. Um, yeah, he is pretty fast. Of course, the hearts are only going to get faster. So I felt like this was a good opportunity to just get pulled along, you know. Um, use him as an advantage to um, to just extend this, this stint a little bit. Of course, the mediums are faster, but there's a point, a crossover point, where the hearts will start to be faster. And I felt like that was right around now. So um, yeah, I'm just going to use this DRS every single lap to uh, stay within that one second window. You can see Mirko is really pushing it and he actually nipped right outside that one second window. But uh, with the help of DRS we managed to get back in and um, yeah, stay in that one second window. We're pretty fast in the last sector usually. Uh, in my F1 Esports qualifying I think I went purple every single lap in the last sector. So um, might be setup related of course but still we are fast in the last sector. now. Everyone goes into the box, um, everyone goes to a new set of mediums, pretty much, in the train. And it's Thomas Ronard, six seconds ahead of us. And his hearts are definitely going to be faster than our mediums now. So I want to extend one more lap compared to everyone else. But quite sure I will be boxing at the end of this lap. Um, as we're just losing too much time at this point. But, of course, if we boxed one lap before this, then we would have had the same issue in the last few laps of the race where our tires will be dropping off so I felt like we might as well just extend one lap and um, get an advantage compared to everyone else you know now as you can see coming to the end of the lap uh, we're gonna box and Thomas Runner is gained around a second on us on that last lap because he goes purple as well um, which means he's pushing his tires and his ERS and he's probably gonna be boxing soon as well so into the box we go new set of mediums go on um, and as you can see there, Jake Benham, I almost want to say Benham, <laughs> it's, uh, it's become a habit now, but uh, Jake with a 5 second penalty for speeding into the pit lane, so if we manage to get into that 5 second window, which we're definitely not at the moment, um, we might have a good shot at gaining another position, you know, coming out of the box, we are in P10, and I think in a net P9, as Alessio Di Capua has stayed out one lap longer than us for now, as we come out right ahead of Simon, which is very unfortunate for him because we've got cold tires and we will not have outright crazy pace out of the box here in this first sector. So um, that's unfortunate for him. And we're just gonna miss out on the DRS from Max Whistle as well, which is annoying, but it is what it is. We're just gonna have to get on with it. You see, we're just 1.4 tenths shy on the detection zone. Um, and yeah, now we're gonna have to. Um, push pretty hard on this outlap to uh, make up for it using a little bit of a battery there to make sure we will get DRS on the main trade and close up and then we're not really in a rush you know because these guys ahead of me have pretty good pace as well and they've only boxed one two laps earlier than me so their tires are not going to be awful as well and um, yeah they've got the undercuts but we've got the fresher tires and you know we're gonna try and get past them in maybe two three laps time and then we can try and close up to that leading group um, Alessio Di Capua and Thomas Lunar 
stay out for another lap. Uh, they're going for fresh tires in the end and uh, hoping for safety car maybe as well. If the safety car comes out in the next one or two laps, then they will take huge benefit of that, of course. But it didn't come and they've both boxed. Thomas has dropped to P4, I think so. But a very fresh set of tires, so he will have that advantage. Now, lap 18, we're still behind Max and Mirko. But you can see right there, Max is flashing and means he's low on ERS. So that is good for us. And you can see it's gone wide there as well. Which gives us the invitation to have a go here. Somewhere in the last sector. Of course, we're going to be struggling to get a power down in Dutch here. But we're going to go for the move here. Down the inside. And up to P8 we go from P20 on the grid. Now, you see there Mirko 8.5 tenths ahead. We're going to try and go for another move soon he is gaining to Manuel Bianchilila so ideally we get past him before he catches up to them but that's easier said than done of course because he's been very fast this wall race uh, to be honest um, and yeah he's not gonna make our life very easy up to lap 20 now you can see Mirko is 1.4 seconds behind Manuel Bianchilila on those hearts and we have to go for it now otherwise it's gonna be a lot harder to overtake him so I'm gonna turn on the overtake button uh, open the DRS, which he does not have, and this should be an easy pass with the help of DRS down the inside. We will be completely past him by the time we get to the braking zone. And now it's Manuel Bincolila on that slower, harder compound ahead of us. And we took the pain early on, of course, with making another pit stop uh, for a set of mediums. And we are taking advantage of that right now. We took the advantage early on, getting. Um, gaining track position of course which we initially lost but um, yeah now we've got another set of mediums which is absolutely beautiful um, these mediums are gonna be I think pretty much faster for the rest of the race than that hard set of tires so um, I think Manu might have the chance to do something against the people who went really early onto another set of mediums but uh, we will have the advantage for the rest of the race, I reckon. And we're just gonna keep closing that gap. Uh, he, he still has DRS, but I, I reckon he might drop out the next lap. So we're not in a rush here. If we can make an easy pass, then we're gonna obviously go for that. And not make our life hard. Waste a lot of ERS, waste a lot of tires and lap time. To uh, just get past the lap early, you know, it doesn't make sense. So, you see there, Manu backhand stepping out. But um, he managed to keep it on track. And he keeps the DRS for at least one more lap. So we're just going to sit back here and save up our battery a little bit for uh, for later on. Now we move on exactly one lap later. Um, Manu's still getting DRS. So I kind of was like, you know, I might as well stay behind another lap. Um, because eventually we will get close enough to just pass him without having to use our battery. But you can see he doesn't have a lot of straight line speed. So... Um, we're probably on lower downforce, I reckon, compared to him. And that helps us into um, into that corner. We just managed to get completely ahead by the time we reached the apex. And uh, that made our life a lot easier, you know. Uh, George is also about to drop out of the DRS. I think he has just actually dropped outside of the DRS. And he doesn't have any battery left as well. So that makes it even easier for us. And the next pass will probably be exactly one lap later on the same spot. Um, because George, uh, George just doesn't have any DRS, no ERS, should be easy pass. He's got all the tires as well, um, which makes her life even more easy. As you can see there, the delta in the top left is just coming down all the time with the help of the DRS. Um, we gained one tenth, one and a half tenth into turn one, and he probably was using his battery as well, just desperately trying to get the DRS from Duncan Hovland, who's driving a stellar race as well, I must say, he's up to P4. Um, right behind the group of Amon Esports drivers. And now we're straight away gonna go on the attack on the very next straight because we want to um, just make sure we get the DRS from Duncan Hovland on the very next lap. And to try and get in that one second window, we're gonna have to use a lot of battery because Thomas, I think, might overtake the leader this lap. And he's gonna be pulling that wall train along uh, with a fresh set of tires. So we need to make sure. By the time he does go for it, we are um, in the DRS right in there, uh, trying to um, take advantage of that a little bit. Because if he don't, then he might just pull that wall train along 
and we're never gonna get in the DRS again. So 1.4 seconds is the gap to Duncan Hovland as we go into the last sector and we're gonna be absolutely sending it in this last sector to make sure that by the time we get to not the main straight, the main, we won't make it um, DRS wise before the main straight but we will in the middle sector uh, which is the longest straight so you get a much bigger advantage uh, from that DRS zone than from this one uh, because this straight is much much shorter and once again we're gonna have to turn on the overtake button a little bit to um, close in the gap is now 1.05 seconds you have gained around four tenths to Duncan in that last sector and once again we're gonna turn on the overtake button on this exit to oh actually I didn't um, I think I was confident enough I was gonna get it which is a bit risky because you can see we're right on the brink there one second um, so yeah I must have had the confidence uh, that I was gonna make the DRS anyway and you can see we actually do we just gained uh, another 1.5 tenths through the S section and I did turn on the overtake button for a brief moment there now we're gonna get DRS because you can see the DRS detection was right there eight and a half tenths behind and Duncan is flashing which means he's below 10% ERS and he's probably struggling a little bit to keep up with the leading group because Thomas has got passed now and he is very fast around here he's got a very fresh set of tires so you can see there uh, Duncan not getting any DRS on this lap he's low on battery and now we're gonna go for it we're gonna absolutely drain this battery now completely to try and straight away and get into that DRS window from Jake Benham. Um, because if we still want to have a shot at winning this race, then we need, we really need his, his DRS. Because otherwise, we're not going to make it. Um, I'm confident, even if they do pull off into the distance, we will stay within that five second window, of course. But uh, Thomas is really fast. I don't think Ruben can put up a fight against him. But if he does, then we want to be right there in the mix. Um, right behind them in case they do um, collide or go wide um, <laughs> like Avenue Sports but um, into the uh, final three laps now of the race uh, lap 25 just finished and I'm desperately trying to get in the DRS you can see the gap is on the one second brink but you can see that Jake is not flashing which means he has a lot more ERS than us probably and he is not using, but um, yeah, eventually he will have to use because the leaders are uh, so fast at the moment because they're on such a fresh set of tires. They might have more ERS than me because they've been kind of chilling all race at the front compared to um, to us where we had to uh, absolutely fight our balls off to make up track position, which we managed to do. We are in an SP3 at the moment with Jake's penalty, which will definitely not be removed because it was a speeding into the pit lane penalty but um yeah p3 it is for now but i kind of wanted more but we just don't have the ers we don't have the tires uh we don't have anything at this point you can see i'm desperately trying to stay within that one second window um but yeah running wide didn't help our lap time there and we're just on the 1.1 second window we just cannot seem to get close enough anymore and with Two and a half laps to go, just over two laps to go. It doesn't look like uh, we're gonna be able to stay within the DRS. Also, Jake is struggling at this point to stay within the DRS of Ruben Pedreno. And he probably used um, a lot of ERS on that last lap to try and stay within that DRS window, which is unlucky for us because, um, yeah, now we've dropped out, unfortunately. Anyway, two laps to go. Um, nothing we can do anymore. We're just gonna keep pushing. Extend the gap to Duncan in case something does happen. Nothing did happen in those last two laps. Thomas is gonna win uh, from pole to P1. We've managed to go from P20 to P3. And unfortunately, we failed our last to first challenge, which, you know, kind of makes sense. It's near impossible to do a last to first challenge against so many incredibly fast drivers. But um, yeah, we closed the gap to Lucas Blakely in the championship though, because he wasn't driving once again. And I think right now we're only 15 points behind, so good for us. Um, I think if we do well next race, then uh, we will take the championship lead. But Thomas Ronhaar and Ruben Pedrena are right behind us. 
So, not sure when the next race is, to be honest. It is going to be Suzuka, then Brazil, then Abu Dhabi. No idea when they are, to be honest. I'll just turn up when they race. We will see. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed last first challenge in a league race. Make sure to like and subscribe for more league racing content. Also, daily videos are going to be back. Sorry, I had a little break um, from the daily videos. I just had to focus on FD Sports. Uh, whenever I feel like I can't produce enough content without sacrificing performance, then I will just switch to the once per two days videos. But I reckon daily videos are going to be back um, permanently now again. Because there's quite a big break between now and Avon Esports Event 4, the final Avon Esports Event. We're still in the title fight. Uh, we are 22 points behind, but uh, we are right in it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, sub like and subscribe. And see you guys next time. Ciao.